Hi everybody, um, and uh, thanks for joining uh, the the session. Um, in this session, I'm going to talk about the product that uh, we've just launched last month, and uh, I'm going to describe uh, the common problems faced uh, faced by app developers during app distribution, uh, especially through alternate app stores, and how App Publish uh, attempts to solve those problems. So uh, first of all, just a quick uh, introduction about uh, myself. I've been a part of uh, InMobi since uh, fairly early days, uh, since June 2009, before we were called InMobi. Um, I've been a part of the Bangalore team, uh, and uh, I've had multiple roles across the organization, uh, varying between engineering and product. Uh, for the last one, uh, for, for about the last year and a half, I've been working with uh, the, the team coming in from uh, Metaflow and uh, and uh, setting up the um, you know app published product and preparing to go to market with it. So here's here's a quick agenda for today. I'm going to just talk about why alternate app stores should form a, a core part of your uh, distribution strategy, and then I'm going to talk about the common sort of problems that are faced for, uh, for you know. During these distributions, but uh, during distribution through alternate app stores, which is why, um, and also sort of why it, it's not exactly common to see a, a lot of developers actually distributing through uh, many of these stores. Um, I'm going to touch upon uh, what App Publish does to solve each of these problems. I have a quick demo through the product, uh, you know, using, using a test account that I have set up, and then we'll break for questions. So, um, as an Android app developer, you're obviously uh, looking towards Google Play as your primary distribution channel. However, it is important to be aware that uh, you need to be, uh, you need to look beyond Google Play for several reasons, right? Most of your advanced users are, are no longer looking at Google Play for app uh, discovery. You know, they're, they're looking for the new and undiscovered apps uh, in sources beyond uh, you know Google Play or even the the default marketplace that comes on their device, you know these are the guys who are hunting uh, online on the on on GetJar and on the independent stores for their apps. Uh, you know and they're they're looking for uh, deals in some cases, getting looking for ad funded versions of premium apps and things like that. Right. So there's there's advanced users who are looking at at alternate sources. Of course, Google Play actually has has very poor local and regional support. So there are countries where Google Play uh, is not supported at all, and at the same time, there are other countries where there's support, but there's not so much uh, local or regional content available. And uh, and sort of regional app stores are actually doing a much better job uh, here. So, for instance, uh, Southeast Asia is is very uh, clearly in 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 that. China obviously is a classic example of a uh, country where Google has no presence whatsoever, and it's only the the local app stores which actually um, rule the roost over there. But in in most of Southeast Asia, even though Google may have a presence, Google Play might have a presence, but uh, the local uh, sort of you know local language and the local content stores and the local content providers actually offer uh, much better uh, reach to to the users than Google Play does. One of the reasons is that Google Play actually is not available on all devices, right? So Android is actually different from Google Play, right? So an Android device, Android is an open operating system and uh, for an Android device uh, to actually have Google Play on it, uh, and you might be aware that uh, it needs to undergo a, cert, uh, a sort of verification process by Google and more importantly, Google actually collects a licensing fee. And so many of the budget OEMs and the budget uh, sort of phones and tablets actually do not, uh, you know, just uh, for cutting the cost, they do not actually pay the licensing fees to Google. And so these devices actually are launched without Google Play, but they have, you know, one of several, uh, one or more alternate app stores as the the source of the apps on on them. So there's there's a fairly large uh, 
uh, user base um, where uh, you know where Google Play is not even available on the device, or even if it is available, it is not the primary app app store. For instance, even uh, Samsung, which you know is is one of the largest, uh, it, it is the largest manufacturer of Android devices. Um, now has you know on on some of its Android devices does not have Google Play installed, but has only Samsung apps, uh, the Samsung app store. So there's um, you know there's a very um, there's there's a very clear distinction between Android and Google Play. So Google Play, while it is the largest app store on on Android, um, it isn't by far the only app store. Now, uh, likewise, you know, on Google Play, uh, there's just a whole, you know, whole lot of apps, almost 800,000 apps, uh, which are competing for attention. So, if you are a new app developer, or if you've developed a new app, um, you need to, uh, once you've published to Google Play, you practically have to pay for promotion. And you know, with the competition growing every day, uh, paying for promotion is just getting more and more expensive. And it is not even necessarily paying through, uh, you know, it's not just paying through ad dollars. It could be exchange programs or uh, incentivized downloads or or what have you. But in any, I mean, in any case, just to gather the initial set of downloads is is becoming more and more expensive. And even then, even if you've paid for, you know, your first hundred, um, you know, your first thousand downloads, your first ten thousand downloads. There's no guarantee that you'll make it into a top X list and start actually gathering organic downloads. So, if you have to go to alternate app stores, then how many app stores are there, and how many app stores do you need to go to? So, at just a last estimation, there are more than two hundred plus large, medium to large sized app stores that are relevant. For your distribution strategy, right? And these include um, many OEM app stores like Samsung and uh, you know Z, um, Huawei, and and there, it also includes operator app stores, Vodafone, Orange, Singtel, and there are a number of significant um, independent stores. You know, SlideMe, Movango, and each of these categories of stores are actually. Fairly relevant and um, you know significant, and they should form an important part of your app distribution strategy. So, I guess you know almost all of us would agree that it it is common sense that you need to be present. You need to take your Android app to more than just Google Play. So why why doesn't everybody do that, right? Why isn't everybody on? Why aren't all apps on all app stores? So there are a number of reasons. Right, some of these app stores um, are all the way, you know, legacy app stores uh, right from the J2ME days, and they do not even have direct to developer programs. They're only used to dealing with uh, the very large uh, game developers or publishers or aggregators, and they're not uh, they're not equipped to deal with uh, sort of you know individual developers with uh, with two to four apps each. They're, they're used to having aggregators come to them with hundreds of apps at a time. So they don't even have a direct developer program, right? Um, many of these uh, are, many of these app stores are based in countries uh, where, you know, just to, to do business with these app stores, you need to be present in the local market. There are some sort of, you know, complex, uh, you, you have to have a local entity, you have to have a local tax ID, and there are a, a number of such complications that, that turn up, right? And um, it's it's not always simple for an app developer to actually go and be a part of these uh, of these uh, app stores programs. And so typically, the only option that's left is you need to go through maybe some some partner, which which essentially who's, who's essentially taking away a lot of your revenue without actually uh, sort of without offering you the control over how you manage your distribution, right? Moreover, every single app store offers it. Every single app store uh, requires a significant extra effort, right? So every app store will have its own set of images and translations. Uh, some of them will ask for images in different sizes, non-standard sizes. It it just becomes um, it's it's almost you know a, an entire a day or a couple of days of effort to submit to one single app store, right? 
and then once you have submitted, um, then there's the additional sort of effort of tracking your app's performance, your reporting, settlements. Um, you know, you your some of these stores may not even have a uh, a reporting dashboard, you know, or or some sort of easily available reports uh, or available to you, and then. There's an independent chase every app store for settlement, so it becomes um, a little bit of an uh, exponentially increasing effort per app store. And uh, compared to the amount of time and and effort that you would spend on this, the the return from some of these app stores is actually fairly low, right? So each of these app stores individually. Uh, may not actually be worth the effort it takes to deal with the App Store individually. So, how does app publish work? Right. So these are. I mean, most of this is 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 sort of known to most of most of you. And like we already know uh, the benefits of alternate app stores. We already know what the problems with uh, with alternate app stores are. Uh, many developers have attempted or are already dealing with. Uh, you know, two or three uh, or four different app stores. So, how does App Publish solve these problems, right? So, fundamentally, what we do for developers is we allow you to take your Android apps or in whatever form they are, right? Whether they are widgets or wallpapers or utilities, as long as they are an APK file, and we allow um, you to take them to a, a whole bunch, a whole selection of app stores, and uh, across all categories. And thereby collectively giving you a significant source of additional downloads. So each of these app stores individually might not add a significant uh, number of downloads uh, to you and might not be worth the effort. But collectively, um, in in our beta tests, we've seen that for certain developers, just um, app publish with uh, you know five or ten of these stores has uh, added up to. Um, Almost uh, a thirty percent incremental uh, set of downloads over Google Play, and all of this is practically for free, right? So, what what you do in in a normal app store submission process is you typically log into an app store, you go through their submission program, you upload your APK, you provide them the images, ultimately leading to your app available on deck. You know whether free or paid for a price, and um, and then you get some downloads, and then you go to a second store. You go through this process all over again. You go to a third store. You go through the process all over again, right? And that's that's when it starts to uh, uh, it start the the returns start to diminish, right? So it becomes um, it it becomes less and less effective for you to go to every additional store because the number of uh, images that everyone is asking for, and the number of translations, and the number of uh, uh, variations on the APKs that folks are asking for is just they just keep growing, and the number of downloads are just not there, right? So the number of uh, the return is just not there. So that's where App Publish is different. So App Publish allows you through a single portal to pick out uh, your app stores that you want to go to based on uh, various attributes of your app. So we Already filter out um, app stores. So if you have an ad-funded application, then we'll filter out apps, uh, app stores which do not accept ad-funded uh, applications. If you have a free app, then we'll filter out app stores which only take premium uh, content and vice versa. Um, even for IAP, right? So if you have a third-party IAP integrated in your app, then we will we will emerge for you the number of app stores that actually. Allow you to uh, publish to them with third-party IAP, and we, uh, you know, App Publish allows you to pick app stores on that, and it takes you through a single uh, submission process and allows you to submit to these sort of, you know, hundreds of stores in through like you know a single flow or through a single platform. And you can go through this multiple times or in one shot, and you can just complete your submission. And it is very, I mean, it is as easy. As can be demoed in in the next uh, sort of you know 10 to 15 minutes. I'll I'll just come up to the demo, um, and then you'll see how how easy it is. So App Publish actually takes care of all the um, all the 
the various marketing uh, translations that might be required. We're making sort of the requirements available to you on a single screen. Uh, there is an embedded automatic translator. So, you know, I know a lot of uh, developers actually uh, just, you know, use Google Translate or some other online translator to actually uh, fit in um, the alternate languages. And so we already have that embedded. But in case you are, uh, you know, serious about uh, your localized uh, marketing descriptions and you have, um, you know, you have used an agency, then you can actually put in uh, your descriptions, um, uh, your alternate languages, uh, language texts over here. And similarly for images, right? So we are we have automated image manipulations to satisfy hundreds of app store requirements uh, very easily. And at the same time, we also allow developers to provide each individual requirement if they have, uh, if they actually have those image requirements ready. And the absolute best part is that there's essentially a single dashboard where you can track your, uh, you know, your reports uh, and settlements across uh, multiple app stores. So you can you can see your revenue and your downloads uh, in the app publish portal itself. So I'm I'm just going to uh, you know quickly switch to to a demo where uh, you know I'll just uh, uh, I'll just demonstrate how easy um, the app publish process is. Right. So um, for those of you who have registered. This uh, this screen might seem familiar to you. This is our home screen. We have uh, we have listed uh, sort of you know the the the, the availability of app stores and um, in in a very concise form is is listed on on the screen. So um, if you'd like, you could uh, potentially start a new project by uh, by providing a new binary. But I'll just you know, in the interest of time, I'll just work with an existing uh, app that I have uh, prepared, right? So it's easy enough to actually uh, begin with uploading your, um, you know, uploading uploading a fresh APK and, and answering sort of, you know, the, the questions. Uh, while uploading the APK, you need to answer a, a couple of questions around, um, um, a couple of questions around whether the app, whether the app is free or whether it is paid, whether it is ad funded, does it have IAP, does it have links to other app stores, and and so on, right? So uh, some basic questions are answered, and and then there's there's an automatically calculated device support, and uh, and an automatically calculated language support. Um, again, you know, um, many of so. That based on the the binaries that you have uploaded, it we actually present to you what you know a whole list of stores that you could potentially go to, right? So you could um, you could basically go to around 111 stores, and there there may be reasons why you cannot go to some of these stores. They might be because of language issues or because of uh, you know app. Uh, App distribution uh, reasons or whatever, right? So there's um, there could be a bunch of reasons why you may not be able to go to uh, some stores, and there's uh, some of these uh, app stores will actually indicate very clearly why um, why you you cannot go to some of these stores. So for instance, you need Greek to be able to go to uh, you know Sony Greece. So that's um, that's simple enough, right? So eventually tomorrow, if you have another binary which has Greek support, then you will be able to go to uh, Sony. L. Meanwhile, you could go to Sony um, for a lot of other countries, and it makes it uh, much very easy, right? So we can um, let's just pick out you know a couple of independent app stores to to sort of demo the app uh, app publish advantage. So I've picked Selfish, uh, which is actually a French store. Uh, as you, you know, as, as and it, uh, in fact, Selfish requires marketing translations in multiple languages. So as you can see, I've entered 
um, you know, text in in uh, English. I've entered my marketing short description and long description and game tips and keywords and copyrights in English. And we have a nifty uh, translator built in. So, you know, we can, um, we have an automatic translation to French and German, Italian and Spanish as required by the app store. Now, in case you actually have an, uh, you know, a human translated version of some of these descriptions, then it should be, you should be, it's easy enough for you to just edit this and provide your own to actually better reflect uh, you know the the data about your app so there's obviously there's you know there's developer name and and rating and categorization which uh, which you can just enter and and then it's moving on to the next step of uh, images so um, again you know um, Submitting to two stores might only have uh, images, might only have around uh, you know 15 odd image requirements, which um, which might be satisfied using just the uh, the eight images that we have that I already have uploaded. But um, if if you were to pick out let's say all 111 stores, then um, the number of images that would be required would be in like you know on multiples of like in what it would be around 200 odd images would be required and uh, even in those situations app publish would only emerge around 25 30 odd images um, for um, on on this page right and it's easy enough to actually review and even replace any of these images uh, that you have sort of you know alternate versions for So once we have satisfied the image requirements, and just just to be clear, uh, you know the image requirements and uh, and the marketing metadata is always maintained in your account. So it's um, even even sort of post um, uh, even once you've completed the submission, and let's say another day you want to come back and submit to a, a few other app stores as well, then the old images that you've provided. Uh, you know, splash screens and um, and banners. All of these images are maintained uh, associated with your account, and uh, you you may not you need not necessarily provide all of these images again when you want to go um, to to more app stores. So then, um, you know, the final screen is where some of you know some custom questions uh, might show up. Again, you know, the based on the complexity of this uh, of submitting to multiple stores, App Publish uh, does extract as much of um, as much of the information uh, in the common flow as possible. Uh, but in some cases, there might be you know one or uh, one or two additional questions that might need to be answered, and um, and in that. And in that case, uh, you know, it's just easy enough for you to uh, pick and answer those uh, those questions on this screen. And once we are done, we can just easily um, complete the submission. Now, I mean, and that's it, right? So the moment you've you've clicked on finish over here, your submission has been queued uh, to to Mobango and Selfish, and uh, you know this is. At, at this point of time, the submission has entered into a sort of you know uh, we it's entered into a backend queue where we are we're packaging up all the information and converting it into a format that's uh, suitable for sending on to Selfish uh, and Mobango. And in in most cases, uh, your app would have been sent on to uh, to do the, to these app stores within you know the next uh, uh, few minutes. Um, optimistically, so that's um, post this. Of course, every app store has its own uh, sort of you know review um, and uh, curation process, which might take their you know it might take uh, they might take any anywhere from uh, you know a couple of days to maybe even you know three to four weeks uh, for for your app to go through their submission uh, review and appraisal or um, curation process. And uh, and for your app to actually start, uh, you know, accruing downloads. 
So, um, so that's that was about the demo, right? So this is just uh, to summarize, and uh, we have uh, sort of you know there there are four reasons for uh, all Android developers to use App Publish. There's um, intense competition in Google Play, and paying for promotion is getting to be more and more expensive. Um, App Publish is free to use. There is no SDK integration required, um, and you know all the all all downloads are are free. And there's um, you know there's there all the downloads will de deliver sort of you know and 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 um, and a dollar an, an LTV to you in some form. Um, App Publish has global reach with like three hundred odd. Um, with, with over 300 million uh, Android users in in 150 alternate stores, um, and um, and then at App Publish uh, also sort of you know with uh, just a rough estimation, uh, App Publish alternate app stores have powered over a billion downloads in 2012, right? So there's over a billion downloads that you can target, and this is you know, as compared to uh, around 30 billion downloads on Google Play. So there's, uh, you know, a target of uh, a billion downloads that you could reach with uh, to reduce competition on Google Play, right? And all of this is is available to you in a very simple, easy to use interface as I just demoed. So um, that's it from my side. So I'm um, I'm now open for questions, if there are any. Okay, thanks so much, Ujwal. Um, we do have some thanks questions so from our participants. If you'd like to ask a question, um, use the Q&A panel on your screen, and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Okay, so one question that has come in, will an app published to the stores be published under the Inmobi app published name or the developer name? So um, as things stand today, uh, on most of the app stores, the app is published under the InMobi app publish or the MetaConnect name. Uh, but we are working with app stores to to change this. So very soon we will have uh, sort of you know the um, the app appearing under the individual developer names. Okay. Got it. How does App Publish support IAP? Do we have to integrate a different SDK API for each app store? Well, um, on some of the app stores, actually, do require uh, app uh, do require developers to support uh, individual app uh, individual SDKs. Uh, but you know, that's that's precisely the kind of uh, process that we want to avoid. For app publish, right? So that's that's not the principle that app publish is built on. So in app publish, if you have used any third-party IAP um, SDK, then uh, those stores which are open to accepting such uh, SDKs will be made available to you. And uh, and stores which uh, you know stores which do not accept um, a third-party IAP SDK but only work with their um, Sort of, you know, in the, their custom SDKs will um, will typically be uh, will typically be uh, sort of, you know, avoided. Um, um, those those SDKs, the, those stores are typically not marked as accepting IAP. So, um, you know, generally, app stores support for IAP falls in three categories. Um, app stores which do not accept IAP at all, so they are some of the premium stores. App stores which accept IAPs through their custom SDKs, and app stores which accept any third-party SDK. Right, so uh, submissions to app stores of the third kind is easy and possible with the with it with the current app publish framework. That said, we are actually working very hard to uh, to solve the problems of the uh, the app stores with the second and first kind, since we do realize that a majority of the developers are consistently uh, making the shift towards a very freemium model of operations. So we are uh, making 
we are uh, in talks with app stores to have a very uh, sort of you know sensible solution to this problem and uh, we will get back with solutions on this okay thank you uh, how does Imobi monetize this feature as in what is Imobi getting out of this so um, so app publish obviously is um, is completely uh, free for um, uh, for developers to use, right? So app publish is not uh, directly targeting any revenue, right? As as you may be aware, Inmobi has uh, several other products, primarily uh, you know through our ad network that we uh, that we use to to drive um, sort of you know to to get um, uh, to drive revenue. And um, obviously, you know, we would appreciate uh, very much if all of the developers using App Publish uh, would use the Inmobi Ads SDK and use the Inmobi network to promote their apps. However, that's not the App Publish goal, right? So, uh, as a part of the developer platform initiative, uh, we are uh, mandated with uh, creating products and platforms to simplify life for app developers, right? And App Publish is a part of of that initiative and um, I'd, I'd like to quote uh, a developer that I was talking to um, in in the last week and uh, when I explained the app publish mandate um, the uh, the developer came up with a very nice statement which which I like so um, and I'm quoting uh, him here um, he said so you are using app publish to make friends and um, and I agree with this, right? So we are using App Publish to make friends, and we want uh, we want to uh, simplify lives of as many of our developers as possible, um, and and generally, you know, create uh, more products that delight them. Uh, and Megan, yes. I am skimming through the questions. Um, how are your updates to apps managed across app stores? So um, some of the apps, uh, some of the app stores actually do not support uh, um, sort of you know actually do not support updates. Um, they they do not have uh, the technology to push updates to devices. So um, typically we uh, do not allow the developers to actually publish. Uh, their updates to their apps on those app stores. However, uh, you know, a large number of independents and the newer app stores are actually uh, generally coming equipped with the technology to push updates to apps similar, similar to the fashion they're handled in Google Play and, and sort of, you know, the other major um, app stores. So on these, app, on these channels, uh, we actually do allow uh, developers to publish uh, newer versions and the flow is very similar to the one that I just uh, demoed where you could take uh, the app you could take the take your upload a newer version of your binary archive your older versions and go through the submission process again um, and uh, the newer version of your binary will be pushed to the app stores and uh, you know if these app stores have um, capabilities to push updates then uh, your updates will uh, over a period of time be pushed out to all the, the users you had gained through those app stores. So yeah, I mean, in, in summary, it, it, it is very similar to, uh, to how updates are handled on Google Play and other, other app stores, um, but um, it, it is only supported by a subsection of the app stores, not all, not all of these uh, distribution channels actually support uh, up push pushed updates. Okay, moving along. Um, one participant has a question. Do you provide a one-stop shop for paid downloads as well? And if so, how can you deliver us the money? Um, so yeah, so we do uh, we do provide a one-stop shop for paid downloads. And uh, so you know we have we have agreements in place um, and sort of you know settlement systems in place with each one of our app stores uh, for collecting uh, revenue from uh, the app stores on on your paid downloads. Um, in this, um, you know, we we typically have a settlement process that runs every month, and we send out a settlement advice 
to all of our developers. And um, once your once the the money that you've earned has crossed a certain threshold, then uh, we can pay them. You know, we we could we pay them out to you through um, the usual channels that that InMovie has available, right? So. Um, InMovie already deals with uh, payouts to all the ad network publishers and, and partners. And uh, in a similar fashion, um, the, the money that is earned from your paid downloads uh, will be uh, accumulated, will be collected in your account and can be uh, sent on, uh, sort of, you know, paid out to you on, um, on, a, on a regular schedule. Now, uh, I'd just like to add a note here. Uh, in um, in in this, at the moment, we are uh, we typically do collect a twenty percent rev share of whatever the developer payout from each of the app stores is, and this is typically just to to cover our sort of you know operational invoicing and currency risks. Um, and and you know this is again this is not this is not driving revenue for us, but rather just covering. Um, the uh, it's it's just barely covering the operational costs. So there's a 20% rev share uh, that InMovie collects on um, on the developer payout from the app stores. Okay, got it. Uh, we have a developer who has published an app a month ago, and it was only selected to seven app stores for his free app, and it was unavailable for 117 stores. And he's wondering why. Um, so there could be a number of reasons. Uh, so typically, uh, some of these app, some of these app stores actually do not uh, do not make um, uh, you know accept apps uh, with, for instance, with links to other apps. So if you have if you have cross promotional links uh, to your other apps on Google Play. Or, or if you have cross uh, sort of you know some sort of a cross promotional uh, uh, link to your home page where people can get other apps or something, then um, uh, then that's that's a property that you declare um, in while uploading your app binary, and um, and that's the uh, you know that's that that is one of the the common reasons for uh, a large portion of the app stores falling off the availability bucket. Um, usually, um, you know, if it, it, it's as simple as sort of, you know, removing your more apps uh, link or more, you know, cross cross promotional links, and then uploading a fresh binary. And you should typically have quite a few uh, app stores available to you. Um, there are still other constraints that that apply, but uh, you know, if you if if you were to reach out to, uh, you know, if you if if you were to reach out to me with uh, your uh, app details uh, to me or to app publish support, then we should be able to help help you out much better. Another question is: Will store communication go to InMobi or sent to us, the developer? Um, sorry, Megan, I just missed that. Could you repeat it? Oh yeah, no problem. Oh, yeah, um, no problem. Will the store communication go to InMobi or send to the developer? Um, so the the store communications um, are are sent to InMobi, um, and uh, you know where relevant uh, in the app publish product will send out a notification um, to the uh, to the developer where you know where about about acceptance and or or rejection of your app. So um, just to be clear, um, you know, AppPublish does not require you to uh, to to enter into an agreement with uh, 120, 130 different app stores. So AppPublish, like you know, InMobi and MetaConnect have agreements with all of these uh, stores, and uh, you just enter into one agreement with uh, you know one one relationship with um, InMobi, um, and and you know that. That one relationship allows uh, you to take your apps to any of the app stores that uh, that you handpick. And what happens to apps that I have already submitted to certain app stores? So if you if you already have submitted some of these apps to, uh, to some of these app stores, um, then unfortunately you cannot obviously. Uh, 
we we cannot manage those submissions for you so it's not it's at the moment it's not possible to actually um you know transfer those um apps to under app publish right at the same time uh, you should not select those stores um for distribution as as, as you as you could see uh, you know the the selection of app stores is is a very proactive process right so you should be careful to not select those stores when submitting through app publish because uh, some of those stores might uh, reject your app um in in case they receive a double submission so uh, you know there's there's always that um, you there's that you need to be careful about not submitting uh, an app through app publish that you've already submitted directly and how are the payments collected from iaps remitted back to the developer so um, in mobi app in mobi is not a party to the iap transactions um, as as i mentioned you know the, um, we're we're not expecting um, app pub, we're not expecting the app developers to actually implement uh the app store specific sdks um for their app and uh, and therefore you know there's there's no question of iap revenue uh flowing back from flowing from the app store or from any other channel right so typically whatever iap um, you are using is is the developer's um uh relationship itself so so the developer should directly receive the money from the the iap revenue from their iap partner and it doesn't come through uh, in mobi and therefore in mobi does not collect any rev share from the uh, iap um, revenue is there an app review testing process like that of the apple app store so um there is there is a, a basic uh, testing process that uh, that the app publish team uh, puts your process uh, put your put your app through uh, but uh, more importantly some of the app stores actually do have a fairly stringent uh, app uh, testing process um, unlike google which doesn't have uh, any app review process at all so uh, several of the app stores actually do have a fairly exhaustive um, um app review tests and guidelines and uh, very often even if the app uh, even if your app submission has gone through um app publish gone gone through app publish without uh, any any issues the, it might still be rejected uh, by some app stores for um sort of you know not meeting some of their submission criteria or uh, most frequently not answering the app publish questions honestly so it like you know if you for instance if you have uh, cross promotional links uh, or if you have ads in your app but you have actually declared that you do not have ads so that's uh, that sort of uh, sometimes might get you rejected from uh, some app stores and when this happens we usually communicate uh, the result back to the app developer and if there is something that can be changed or that can be fixed and then resubmitted then we uh, sort of you know allow we we usually guide the developer through the uh, the resubmission process and uh, assist them in in sort of you know getting approved with the app stores is there any way to specify the country for instance if i only wanted to publish to us stores am i able to do that so at the moment um we don't really have a way to uh, to publish uh, to to actually pick specific countries um so the only way potentially would be to to sort of you know review the apps uh, review the app stores and the review the country coverage for the app stores and um, and then sort of you know cherry pick the the app stores that you want to go to and even then if you were to for instance if you were to pick a global store then in some cases uh, those those stores might not be uh, in in addition to us you want to go to only us but you have picked a global store then there might not be a way to restrict your app distribution only to us um that said um this is a um 
a problem that we are aware of, a concern that we are aware of, especially uh, that you know developers have restricted licensing in some cases. They are allowed to distribute, or they have uh, sort of you know content uh, license only for specific geographies or or stuff like that. Um, and we are working on enabling app store filters, which actually make uh, sort of you know categorization, which allows you to quickly. Uh, filter out uh, app stores by country or geography uh, and enables you to select those app stores much much more easily so there's uh, there's a lot more coming in the next version of app publish which solves all of these uh, concerns and can the developer remove a store listing if necessary um so it's it's possible, but uh, but usually not an automated process. So um, none of the app stores that we are connected to uh, have any sort of uh, you know online or automated process to actually delist your apps from uh, from them. So if um, if for whatever reason you do need to uh, get your apps pulled down from a specific app store, then uh, then uh, it, you would need to reach out to app publish support with the details and uh, and usually support will help you through um, sort of you know pulling pulling down the content I mean that although although I mean we are there's there's no there is um, there's no reason for having to do this uh, usually but uh, I mean for performance reasons because even if let's say your app doesn't perform um, on a specific app store in the first couple of weeks or so, there is really nothing to lose to just leave it there because it keeps gathering additional downloads. However, we have seen uh, this happen in some cases when, uh, for instance, you know the the developer has lost distribution rights for the application, or or you know the license has expired, um, or or some stuff. So it is possible. Um, unfortunately, it's not it's not as simple as actually publishing on the App Store, uh, so it needs to go through app publish support. Some countries require game rating certificates. Is there a process to help them with that? Um, so, um, so app publish does have a, um, a store specific rating uh, process, obviously. Uh, app stores require um, require every every app store will typically require you to provide the rating in a different in an independent rating scheme, and uh, where possible we calculate that uh, automatically from our sort of generic rating. But uh, on occasion, we actually um, uh, do surface a question on on the review screen where you know you have to pick uh, from the app stores. Uh, provided rating scheme. At the present time, we do not actually uh, have any process to support, uh, you know, getting your game rated or uh, sort of, you know, any any way to connect uh, you to rating agencies if um, if if that's what uh, you were talking about. But uh, but this is again part of the the value added services that we are uh, are considering in the next in the upcoming months. So uh, you know very soon we um, we might be able to come up with uh, sort of you know uh, be able to you know assist you in the the rating process as well. And when will App Publish go out of beta? Um, App Publish is already out of beta. Um, App Publish is open, uh, open to use, and uh, the form on inmovie.com uh, slash app publish allows you to register and uh, begin using the product immediately. So we are out of beta, and um, and you know we have uh, you know we have over uh, seven over eight hundred developers who are actively using. Uh, App publish to publish their apps. Okay, got it. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us for today's session. If we didn't get to your question today, we'll send you a personal response to your email. We'll be sending out the recording in a couple of days. 
Huge thanks to Ujwal um, and to you for joining us. Have a great rest of the week. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Megan. And thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye.